hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial uh, in today's video we are going to start a new section uh, which is related to the branch of electronics communication instrumentation uh, and signal processing okay so today we are going to start the whole uh, new section of signals systems and signal processing okay so there will be a lot of videos related to these uh, the concept which related to signal systems and processing of signals so <clears throat> i have already uh, posted a brief video related to signals and uh, the different types of signal functions i would uh, recommend you to watch that video but still to take the discussion in a uh, in an orderly way i will introduce something about signals i will start it with signals because if i go directly into the other things without going into signals it will be uh, it would not be good okay so in order to keep our discussion smooth and steady i will begin with an introductory video related to signals then i will discuss the other related things okay so let us start our discussion first the question arises what is a signal okay so we can define a signal as anything that carries data or information okay anything carrying data or information the signals are of various types okay it can be a physical signal it can be an electronic signal there are bio signals as well signals arising from the body which are then converted into electrical form uh, the there are various which are used for medical analysis there are different types of signals so the signals they carry data or information in the signal system and signal processing in this uh, subject we are going to confine our discussion only to electrical signals okay because only electrical signals can be interpreted by the various instruments machines that we use they can only deal with electrical signals and by electrical signals i mean voltage or current and from this voltage or current signal we can calculate other parameters such as energy power uh, rms value average value all the other things they are derived from these two electrical parameters so the electrical signals most of the electrical signals we come across will be either in the form of voltage or current okay so <coughs> sorry these uh, signals they carry the data or the information which can be in the form of voltage or current this signal is uh, actually a dependent variable okay it's a dependent variable it depends on other parameters or other variables to represent itself completely okay for its representation okay 
let's say I call a signal as a function of a number of variables v1, v2, v3 up to vn. Okay, it can be a function of n variables, let's say. Okay, then it is called as an n dimensional signal because its representation, its value is dependent on n variables. Okay, similarly, we can have one or two dimensional signals. Okay, mostly in signal systems and signal processing to reduce complications, to reduce complexities, mostly we deal with one dimensional signal and if needed two dimensional signals. Okay, mostly our discussion is confined to that. Now, that signal, okay, which is a function, it can be a function of the variables time, position, okay, then it can also be a function of let's say uh, distance, then it can be a function of let's say temperature, it can be a function of pressure, lot of other things, etc. But mostly, mostly the signals that we will discuss in signal system and signal processing, they are a function of time. Okay, time is the important parameter here. Time mostly will come across time dependent signals. Okay, the function ft is critical here. It means the function is dependent on time. Okay. So, this is very important. Okay. So, mostly we will come across time dependent signals or time domain signals. So, there are various ways of representing a signal. There are different types in which we can uh, represent the signal so that it conveys the information in the best possible way to the user. Okay. So, now let us discuss about the various types of signal that are dealt in signal systems and signal processing. So, previously we discussed that uh, signal is an uh, entity which carries data or information about a particular phenomena. Okay? It can be dependent on one, two, three or as many variables, independent variables and accordingly it is called as a one dimensional, two dimensional or n dimensional signal. And it can be a function of time, distance, position, pressure, temperature and any other variable or parameter. So now we will discuss about the broad categories of the type of signals that we come across or that we will deal with in uh, signal systems and processing of the signals. So the types of signals. Okay. So, mostly when we call the types of signals, mostly people say signal can an, uh, either be analog, okay, analog signal or digital signal. Okay, either it is analog or digital. Now, analog signal is actually continuous and by continuous I mean to say that suppose 
this is a uh, the axis with respect to time and this is any other parameter which is a function of time the signal value so the analog signal will be like this it means at each and every instant of time the function is defined and it has it can take as many values as it can there there is no restriction on the magnitude of this signal quantity it can take as as many values as it can it, it can be 2 volt it can be 5 ampere it can be 6 uh, let's say psi whatever depending on the type of signal it is there is no restriction it can take any value in the range of from 0 to infinity there is no restriction on that but for a digital signal it has fixed values okay fixed values it means it has a particular value corresponding to logic 0 and has another fixed value corresponding to logic 1 this is generally called as the low state this is called as the high state so it is generally in the form of a pulse you will come across digital signals in the form of pulse like this this is the high or logic 1 and this is the low the values the voltage current or any other value corresponding to that high or low it can change for example 5 volt is generally considered as high 0 volt is considered as low and there can be other things as well where the opposite logic is used where 5 volt is considered for low 0 volt is considered for high this is the negative logic system the previous one was the positive logic so that can change but it the only thing to to make out from these two analog and digital distinction is that analog signals can take as many values as it can during the entire duration of propagation of the signal from 0 to infinity but the digital signals can have only two values high value or low value but here it can be anything from 0 to infinity okay now this is all about analog and digital signal i am not going to go into detail of how the analog signal is converted into digital signal that will take up a separate video at actually not a single video it can take two or three videos to explain that concept but here i would like to say that in between analog to digital there is another type of signal which exists which which we get during the process of conversion of analog to digital signal it is called as the discrete time domain signal discrete time domain signal which is very very important in between analog and digital there exists the discrete time domain signal it's also called as the discrete time signal okay so this discrete time domain signal is very important for our analysis okay so as it is it has discrete values this signal has discrete values defined at specific instants of time okay defined at specific instants of time this is the feature of discrete time domain signal it is actually derived from the continuous time signal okay so it it is in between analog and digital the discrete time domain signal is somewhere in between analog and digital okay it's a mediator between the two you can call it like that 
okay so it is defined only at discrete instance of time so now we have to go a little bit into analog to digital conversion so that you can understand this in a better way okay